Um, this video actually started out as a project for GoPro. Uh, I was shooting a video for them and they had very, very specific instructions on what to say, do, where, and basically everything, the camera settings. So my chesty, it was, it was just a point of view check. Uh, it was just a point of view video. So I was just shooting on the chesty. I couldn't wear a watch and I wasn't supposed to talk a lot. That was normally I like try to talk a lot about the baits a lot. So if you see some of these fish catches on this video and you're like, why is he not talking at all? It's because I wasn't supposed to talk. They wanted to be the noises to be the atmosphere of the video. So just a heads up on that. You thought it was kind of weird. It was kind of, it was kind of weird, but um anyhow let's let's uh let's let's do the intro on this video and i'll see y'all yeah i'll do the intro then i'll see y'all later okay what's up everybody welcome back to another episode of Darien is fishing today i am out here again on lake gunnersville um throwing some of my favorite baits there is 6xd 10xd and a jerky j or just a regular swim bait the one works perfect but uh awesome day it's hot out here but the fish are biting and hopefully we'll catch some today the fishing has been decent there's some places they're biting at some places they're not it's super hot and it's just that weird summertime thing where like you can't just go catch them everywhere but when you find them it's pretty good so for a minute and then it just really is bad um so i know that sounds like a lot of rambling and jambling and whatever else you want to call it but it's the honest truth so Thank you guys for all the support. We're so close to 10,000 subscribers, it's not even funny. Um, I've got some huge, huge announcements to make when I hit 10,000. It's probably gonna be on Wednesday's video. Um, man, I'm, I'm crazy excited. I've got a lot of stuff to give away, uh, rod and reel. I've got a discount code and uh, just a lot of really cool stuff is going on right now. And I'm just thankful to be able to share that opportunity with all of you. So. If you haven't already, please go subscribe to get us to 10,000 so that the Wednesday video will be able to drop on time because I'm not going to drop that video until we're over 10,000. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to go do a little cranking, throwing a swim bait around, and I'll see you guys out there on the action. First cast. Just like that. Quick removal. Let's get back in there and see if we can do that again. I didn't even have to really reel that thing. Hmm. How about that? Love when you catch that when you're deep cranking. Oh, this feels like a big one. It's not a big one, it's just a mad one. There's a good one.
so when I just landed that fish, this is what he spit up in my boat. And I wanted to show you something very special about that shad. So as you can see here, literally the shad is the exact size as the baits that I've been throwing. Swim bait, spoon, bull shad, a five inch bull shad, and a 10XD. Everyone's scared that this 10XD is too big for the bass or even a bull shad, but check this out. That was a three pound bass and he spit this up and I didn't even see it when he had it in his mouth. Like he, it just spit it up whenever he did. So this is a perfect example that, you know, even though we think that a lure might be too big, it's really not. Bass has to survive out in the wild. He doesn't get to pick and choose if he wants a small minnow today or a small crawfish. Sometimes he's just got to eat whatever's there and he's not scared to eat a, a, a shad that is literally, he's literally not scared to eat a shad that's the size of your hand. So don't be afraid to throw big baits um, for bass because as you can see, they cough up big things. So just keep that in mind. If you're ever wondering if this bait's too big, odds are it's not. So don't be scared to throw it. And uh, yeah, back to the action. Oh, that one feels like a big one. Just came off. Little guy. Crushed it as soon as I paused it. I know y'all saw that. Oh, he's been caught us several times today. Get well soon, buddy. Literally the second that I paused it. Make sure y'all are paying attention to things like that too because especially as the summer goes on if you're ledge fishing or probably any fishing to be honest but especially ledge fishing as the summer goes on these fish get harder and harder and harder to catch and little things matter a lot more so in the beginning of the summer honestly if you find some fish you can pretty quickly catch them as the summer goes on they get much harder to catch i say that then i wreck one Not a big one. Hooked perfectly, right in the top of the mouth. And if you, if you let the rod load up and then you just kind of pull, do a pull set into them, that's how it's gonna hook them every time. Just like that, right in the top of the mouth. Don't come off, there's a good chunk. Get him back and get him in the water. But as I was saying, early in the summer, you don't have to do all the little things perfectly. Like that fish right there, bit it at this second. I mean, it was like he was following it. And as soon as I killed it, he hit the bait. Earlier in the summertime, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can pretty much, once you find them, they're gonna bite. You can, a lot of times you can throw whatever you want, but I've downsized my line and downsized the size of my swim bait. And as soon as I get to the stop and go with the swim bait, they're absolutely crushing it. Y'all can see on this rod that I'm using, this is a Quantum Accurus rod. It's a 7.4 heavy, but this is truly a, I would call this a medium heavy or 
a, a parabolic bin. It's not necessarily a parabolic bin, but it has some of the similar traits where the whole entire rod loads up. A lot of times on a heavy rod, the backbone all the way to here is meaty, really, really meaty. And then the tip has some action, like for skipping a jig. This rod, it loads up really, really well all the way to the base down to here. And that's important when you're throwing a single hook bait, like a chatterbait or a swim bait. Anything that you need to just let the bait load up, let the rod load up, and you're gonna do a pull set, that's very important because you don't wanna rip the bait out of the fish's mouth. If you have too heavy a rod, when you go to pull set on that fish, a lot of times you're gonna rip the bait right out of his mouth, or a reel set, not a, I keep saying a pull set, a reel set. You're just kind of reeling into them and lean back. You don't necessarily have to get that swinging hard, crazy action. Right, I'm going from one school to the next school. I'm actually gonna long line, which means I threw a cast out and I'm just letting it free spool as I use the trolling motor to drive me down this ledge. So basically, I'm gonna have an extremely long cast to reel in, but it will be covering a lot of good water. So maybe, just maybe, I can catch one on this cast. Just, you just keep your thumb on it, that way the boat is pulling your lure, your crankbait. And I'm periodically seeing fish on the graph, so hopefully on this extremely long cast, we'll find some fish. There we go. Little guy, get in the boat. <laughs> On that huge long line cast, he bites it right under the dang boat. He's bleeding like crazy too. Get him. Shit. Son of a gun behind me. Well, that wraps up an awesome day on the water. Um, literally, it was so awesome to see that shad. It was basically like a four and a half inch, maybe five inch shad. Um, because it was literally the exact same size as those baits that I've been using. And I'm seeing all this bait jumping every now and then, they'll come up schooling and you see the bait, but to have that bait in my hand to be able to compare it to the shad and just see exactly the size of it, that just proves that, you know, you're throwing the right bait and that kind of confidence wise, just boosts your confidence when you see little things like that. Oh, they're schooling, they're schooling everywhere around me and I can't catch them. It's driving me crazy. Anyways, also later, at some other time, I'll be able to show this when the fish cooperate, but the gizzard shad here on this lake, they get so big, like literally you could see an 18 inch shad on this lake, which is just crazy to me, but bass actually eat them. And if you didn't know this, bass eat other bass. They eat catfish. Um, they are, obviously they're predators um, and they, they're not scared to, I guess they're cannibals too, because they're not scared to eat each other and, and they're going to do what they got to do to survive. So, if it requires them eating a, an eight or 10 inch shad, then that's what they're gonna do and they're gonna figure out a way to make it happen. And so, anyhow, you see me throwing a lot of big baits at, from time to time, big shad baits. That's just because the this lake that I'm on, on Lake Gunnersville, the, we have a lot of gizzard shads here. We also have threadfin shad, but the gizzards get so big. And so that kind of keeps my confidence up about not being scared to throw those bigger baits. So keep that in mind. Obviously, if you don't live on a gizzard shad lake or place that it doesn't make sense to be throwing a bigger um, shad style lure, I don't know how much sense that might make um, to, to throw one, but I think you could still experiment with it. As always, thank you for supporting this channel. Um, I'm having a lot of fun right now. The channel's growing. The content is steady right now. Um, I've got 
I, I've got a kayak coming, so I'm gonna be fishing out of a kayak a lot uh, coming up, which I've never done before. I've never actually, I mean, I've went kayaking on the river, but I've never actually had a fishing kayak. Uh, it's a pedal drive, and so I'm super excited about that. Um, and it's time to sell this beautiful boat. Um, I already found the one I'm gonna order next. It's a it's a 21 footer with a dual console. That way, whoever's sitting with me, they can be blocked by the wind. Um, I know it's kind of a pain sometimes when you're getting just beat by the wind. And so I'm gonna do a dual console. I know that Hannah will definitely appreciate it because her and I fish a lot of tournaments together. So I know keeping that that wind out of her hair or just I, just in general, it. God, they're schooling. Hang on. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Go to the dual console for next year. So every year um, I sell the boat that I'm in and I upgrade. God, there's some big ones schooling too. I'm just gonna let them keep playing. Um, I sell the boat that I'm in, I upgrade to a new boat. I'm working with Ranger. I do, I, I work a lot with Ranger. So that's the boat that I get. And I love this boat. Um, actually, this Friday I'm doing a boat, maybe this Friday, probably Friday. Yeah, this Friday, my actual boat tour video is gonna be live, so y'all get to see that. And uh, the timeline of the video is gonna be a little backwards because you're already watching this video and you'll be watching my next video before you even see me go pick this one up. As y'all know, I exploded my trolling motor, had to go get that fixed, so. Anyhow. Thanks everyone for the support. Thanks for watching the channel. Thank you for watching this video. If you thought that the shad were cool, the, the fact that that one shad was the same size as a fish, and I caught several on this video, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, which like 90% of the people that watch my videos, or maybe I think it's like 94% of the people that watch my videos, haven't even subscribed to my channel. What in the hell are y'all doing? Um, so please subscribe. If you haven't already, click the button down on the bottom where it says subscribe. Or just take your little quick mouse movement down there, smash it, and I will appreciate it, and I'll see you guys on the